Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 3rd of November. Voting for Phase 2 of India's Bihar State Assembly polls held amid pandemic. Afghanistan mourns victims of Kabul University attack. And Sri Lanka rescues about 100 whales after mass trending. And now for all the details. With COVID-19 guidelines in place, Phase 2 voting for India's Bihar Assembly polls was held on Tuesday with 1,463 candidates in the free in 94 seats across 17 districts. Phase 2 is arguably the most crucial of the three phases of the Assembly election. Meanwhile, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Congress leader Rahul Gandhi both joined electioneering for candidates of their respective coalitions in the fray in the last phase of polling in the elections by addressing rallies as the voting was underway. Voting was held in 94 of Bihar's 243 seats on Tuesday in the second phase of the assembly polls in the state. This phase is arguably the most crucial of the three phases of the assembly election. Over 28.5 million voters will decide the fate of nearly 1,500 candidates. The key candidates include Tejas V. Yadav, the chief ministerial candidate of the opposition alliance of the RJD, Rashtriya Janata Dal, the left and the Congress. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and opposition Congress leader Rahul Gandhi both joined electioneering for candidates of their respective coalitions in the fray in the last phase of polling in the elections by addressing rallies on Tuesday. Modi has been campaigning aggressively for NDA, National Democratic Alliance candidates. While the Prime Minister once again attacked Rahul and Tejasvi, he said that Bihar has left behind the darkness of insecurity and anarchy. Gandhi criticized Modi and Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar over rising coronavirus cases and the migrant crisis in the state. बिहार के गरीब को अपनी मर्जी की सरकार बनाने का अधिकार ही नहीं था जंगल राज के उस दौर में मतदान के दिन गरीबों को घर से नहीं निकलने दिया जाता था बूथ के बूथ लूट लिए जाते थे ऐसे लोग बिहार को फिर पुराने दौर में ले जाना चाहते हैं। The third and the final phase of voting will take place on November 7. The process of declaring the result will begin on November 10. Meanwhile, voting for by-elections on 54 assembly seats spread across 10 states was also held on Tuesday. In news from Afghanistan. Afghans on Tuesday remembered at least 22 victims of Monday's horrific terror attack on the Kabul University as the country marked a national day of mourning. The attack claimed by the Islamic State militant group came amid a soaring rise in violence in the country and efforts to kickstart direct peace talks between Afghan government and Taliban in Doha. Afghanistan marked a national day of mourning on Tuesday to remember at least 22 people, mostly students who were killed in a horrific terror attack a day earlier on the Kabul University, which was claimed by the Islamic State militant group. Monday's brutal, hours-long assault was the second attack on an educational institution in the Afghan capital in as many weeks, even as Taliban insurgents and Afghan government negotiators hold peace talks in Doha. Some students gathered outside the Kabul University on Tuesday and even called for boycott of the ongoing peace talks in Doha, saying that despite peace efforts, there has been no let-up in violence. 
هر وقت یک تظاهرات کنیم در برابر این همه نوبهنجاری ها و می خواهیم که صدای خود برسانیم به جهانیان که ما هیچ وقت تسلیم نمیشیم هر اگر هر چه قدم ما را بکشن ما به تحصیل و درس خود ادامه میدیم و تا آخرین قدم ما به در درس و تحصیل خود ادامه خواهیم دیم The Taliban, which condemned the university attack and denied involvement within hours of its start, have refused to declare a ceasefire so far. Meanwhile, U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad, while condemning the attack on Tuesday in a series of tweets, warned that the barbaric attack is not an opportunity for the government and the Taliban to score points against each other. There is a common enemy here, he said, while referring to Islamic State. In news from Bangladesh, Bangladesh's biggest Islamist group on Monday told the government to cut diplomatic ties with France within 24 hours as police stopped thousands of its supporters from marching towards the French embassy. Tens of thousands of Muslims across Bangladesh, the world's third biggest Muslim country with more than 160 million people, have been protesting against remarks by French President Emmanuel Macron in a row about cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. Thousands of supporters of the Islamic group Hifazat e Islam marched towards the French embassy in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka on Monday to protest against President Emmanuel Macron and call for a boycott of French products. Barricades set up by riot police failed to stop the march as hordes of people shoved past authorities while chanting slogans. In recent weeks, Macron has enraged Muslims by describing Islam as a religion in crisis all over the world and for vehemently defending free speech that some have deemed blasphemous and inflammatory. Macron's remarks were made in response to two recent attacks in France. ফ্রান্সের সরকার ফ্রান্সের প্রধানমন্ত্রী আমাদের রসুল সালামকে নিয়ে কটুক্তি করেছে সেই জন্য আমরা এটার প্রতিবাদে মিছিলে একত্রিত হয়েছি ফ্রান্সের দূতাবাস ঘেরাও করব সেখানে আমরা আমাদের দাবি যে নেই ফ্রান্সের দূতাবাস থাকতে পারবে না এবং ফ্রান্সের যত পণ্য আছে এগুলো বয়কট করতে হবে লাস্ট উইক আ নাইফ বিল্ডিং টুনুশিয়ান ম্যান কেলিং আল্লাহ হু আকবার मीनिंग আল্লাহ ইজ গ্রেটেস্ট বিহেডেড আ ওমেন এন্ড কিল টু আদার্স ইন দি ফ্রেঞ্চ সিটি অফ নিস Two weeks earlier, an 18-year-old beheaded a French middle school teacher who had shown pupils cartoons of Prophet Muhammad in a lesson on freedom of speech. France has allowed displays of the cartoons. There have been similar protests in other mainly Muslim countries over the dispute. Moving on, locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have lamented government apathy to develop the crumbling infrastructure in the illegally occupied region, which continues to afflict their lives. Locals have expressed anger over recent destruction of a major park in Muzaffarabad city, allegedly by a land mafia and blamed no action has been taken so far. Crumpling infrastructure in Pakistan-administered Kashmir continues to afflict lives of locals in the illegally occupied region. Locals in Muzaffarabad city are angry over recent destruction of a major park near the Supreme Court building, allegedly by a land mafia. They blame the authorities have continued to ignore the site which used to be a place for recreational activities in the center of the city and has now been left ruined. The persisting condition has created a worrisome environment for the public. क्या आप देखें इसका हाल क्या कर दिया है देखने काबल नहीं रही जगह ऐसा लग रहा है खंडर पड़ा हुआ है लगे शहर का वस्त है बिल्कुल दरमियान है लोग यहाँ पे सुबह जो है मौके लिए आते हैं और लात देखें यहाँ के डस्ट इतनी है कि यहाँ सांस लेना मुश्किल हो रहा है People of Pakistan administered Kashmir have been waiting for years now for a better administration that could work for the development. However, the corruption and ignorance in the system has become a major challenge for the growth of the illegally occupied region, leaving its future in dark. Pakistani authorities seized a 36.2 kilogram haul of heroin worth over 2.25 million US dollars which was destined for Montreal in Canada a customs official said on Monday the drugs had been stored inside small packages hidden inside containers of footballs holding a news conference in the southern port city of Karachi chief collector of customs Sefuddin Janojo said five people had been arrested as part of the discovery and an investigation was underway. 
The pouches of heroin was found hidden inside the footballs and under layers of cardboard used in the packaging. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan villagers have defied novel coronavirus curfew to try to save about 100 whales stranded on the beach on the island's southwest coast. Men waded into the breaking surf to push the small whales back to the sea on Monday while curious villagers gathered to watch. Sri Lankan villagers defied the novel coronavirus curfew to try to save about 100 whales stranded on their beach on the island's southwest coast. Man waded into the breaking surf to push the small whales back out to sea on Monday while curious villagers gathered on the beach at Panadura, south of the capital Colombo, to watch, ignoring a 24-hour coronavirus curfew. As news of the Sri Lankan stranding spread, officials from the Coast Guard and Navy arrived to help with the rescue, which went on late into the night. Sri Lankan Minister Namal Rajapaksa took to Twitter to thank the fishermen, Sri Lankan Navy and other volunteers for their contribution. The phenomenon of whales getting stranded in shallow water remains largely a mystery to scientists. In September, several hundreds of whales died in shallows off the coast of Australia in its biggest stranding on record and one of the largest in the world. Scores of Sikh devotees on Monday offered prayers and lit earthen oil lamps at the famous Golden Temple in India's Amritsar city to mark the birth anniversary of Guru Ram Das, the fourth Sikh spiritual leader. Guru Ram Das is prominently known to be the founder of Amritsar in India's northern Punjab state. Devotees in India's northern Amritsar city offered prayers at Sikhism's holiest shrine, the Golden Temple, on Monday to mark the birth anniversary of fourth Sikh Guru or spiritual leader, Guru Ram Das, amid coronavirus pandemic. Scores of Sikhs thronged the Golden Temple as they marked the occasion with lighting earthen oil lamps and enjoyed fireworks in the evening. Guru Ram Das, who was born in 1534 AD, is prominently known to be the founder of Sikhism's holiest city Ramdaspur, which later came to be known as Amritsar. He also composed 638 hymns in 30 classical ragas or musical modes. वैसे ही संगत अपने जो वर्ल्ड में महामारी फैली है कोविड-19 की उसके लिए भी अरदास करती है कि जल्द से जल्द ये बीमारी ठीक हो और दुनिया वैसे ही जल्द से जल्द अपने काम काम काज पर लग जाए majority of india's sikh population which forms 2% of more than 1 billion population resides in northern india particularly in the state of punjab and in national capital new delhi Elephant safaris have resumed in Kaziranga National Park in India's northeastern state of Assam seven months after being forced to shut by the COVID-19 pandemic. Kaziranga National Park, a World Heritage Site, is a success story of conservation of one-horned rhino and other wildlife. Authorities in Kaziranga National Park, a World Heritage Site in India's northeastern Assam state, on 1st of November, resumed their elephant safaris after over seven months of COVID-19 lockdown. With easing of lockdown restrictions by the government, authorities resumed the safari services for 37 tourists at a time, adhering to current COVID-19 safety protocols. The forest officials, along with elephant trainers, performed a small ceremony for an auspicious start to the safari. The first batches of tourists were taken on the one-hour ride through the forest, which is home to the endangered one-horned Indian rhinoceros. Uh, response is quite good that uh, we, we opened around 37 seats for the tourists and we got 100% booking. And we hope that in coming days the tourism will improve upon. 
spread over 430 square kilometers, Kaziranga National Park is a success story of conservation of the one-horned rhino and other wildlife. Besides one-horned rhinos, the park is home to a significant population of elephants, tigers, bison, swamp deer and leopards among others. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.